Hi everyone, thank you for being here. My, my name is Leo Jimenez. I am teacher in uh, Master of Entrepreneurship and Innovation of uh, Techno Campus. I have the honor of introducing Alex Caudet, my friend uh, and the, the teacher today, so that he can explain to us how to scale B2B sales. Welcome, Alex. Hello, Leo. Thank you very much for your warm introduction. It's a pleasure to be here today with you. Thank you. So thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I am very happy to be here with, with you all. I'm going to tackle the topic about B2B sales uh, and to unleash your, your potential. So the idea is that we have a 35, 40 minutes uh, uh, conversation and later we are going to have uh, any answer that you could that you could have if, if at any point you have a question you could ask and interrupt me any point okay thank you very much so we are going to to divide this uh introduct this speaking in a uh, three blocks the first one is a brief introduction about uh me and about the uh, uh, my company the second one we are going to go deeper to the three pillars that is going to have the B2B sales or the science that is making the B2B, the B2B sales. And finally, we are going to have a wrap up of everything uh, in the entrepreneurial part. So the B2B sales part that I'm going to explain is about to see it and proceed the stage and how you are uh, focusing on the problems that the startups and SME has in that, in that stage, okay? So what we do at Raise the Bar is basically uh, we are a hybrid consultancy and a training and development platform. So what we help is startups and SMEs to help them grow. As you know, when you are starting a company, you don't have C-level executive. You have one, two, three co-founders, depending. Uh, but if you are in the B2B space, you need someone that understands really well how it works. So what we do is we have a fractional executive for you, which is called your CSO on demand. Uh, a little bit about, about me, I studied chemistry. I studied a five-year degree, but I started to work in a lab, which I don't like it in, in six months. I was uh, out of that, of that story and starting a, a, new, a new career in, in the more in the most business part and related to trading and beautiful. So my first my first um, experience was related to renewable energy uh, here in Europe and in Asia, but focus on the trading and sustainability part. I the second part of my of my life it was involved about tech because I was very curious about tech. So I started. Uh, with a company here in, in Spain was a consultancy and I helped them grow. So basically we are going to talk about Zetaima later. And finally, as all the things has been all really well, so I started to be an entrepreneur in 2016. So I co-founded an e-commerce company, later a B2B marketplace. And finally the consultancy that I am talking. Also, I have to say that I, that I've been running different incubators and accelerator programs here in, in Spain, in Atico Lab, and I'm collaborating with uh, B Combinator and different, and different entrepreneurial and innovators uh, playgrounds. I'm not alone in this project, so I have different collaborators, some people from marketing, content, uh, specialists about uh, qualification, and also in the general management. And these are some of our clients. So as you see, they are mostly B2B. Uh, Leo, you know about go for click uh, but you have different, different SaaS and different, different services, but not all of them are B2B SaaS. You have also services and you have also traditional, traditional businesses. So what's the important part when you are starting a business or when you have some funding and you would like to go for the next level. So it's important that you have in mind which are the stages of your startup or your company. It's quite different when you have 
an MVP or you don't have it, when you have a product market fit, when you are looking for it, when you are finding some channel or at the end when you have some maturity. So we are going to divide this conversation in two topics. So the first one is from zero to one and the other one is from one million to 10 million. So the skills, the technology, and the person involved behind, it's quite different. It's not the same when you are in from zero to one, you are understanding, you are curious, you are um, you are trying to, to match the problem with the fit. And when you are from one million to 10 millions, you are scaling, you are putting, uh, you are pouring resources, you are going in the, putting all your, your efforts to growth okay so it's quite different i love this this image because it's not like uh, because i am a chemist but is when you are in uh in this stage you have to know that there's a scientific method behind you have to formulate hypothesis so if i do if, if i i think if i do that i'm going to obtain this so it's important. So you don't expect that a result could be 30% directly. So as the financial, uh, as in financial, we have uh, interest compound. Here in startups, you have growth, but this growth is mostly you run 100 tests, you obtain 10 different tests that are good, 90% 90 per, 9, 90 of them are not good, but from this, 10% that are good, you are going to obtain a 1% increment, 2%. So, and the out of, and the out of those are going to obtain this 10% increment that you expect. So, in this initial scenarios, you have to have this in mind. Normally, when we are developing a product, we are focused on features. We think that our features will uh, give us a product market fit. The important thing here is our value proposition, not just the feature. It's about which is the benefit that the client is going to obtain with our solution. And more than the time, we are just focused on the product side, but we have two different circles. We have the customers, with, which are people, which have needs, and we have to connect with them. We have to understand the, their points and also how we achieve the people, how we achieve the, the people that are involved here in the, cell, in the sales model. So which is the business model, which are the channels, which are the people that is behind, okay? So now let me show you a little bit a uh, success case that we had, I told you about a company that is called Zetaima. Uh, I started in Zetaima in 2012. This was a company that was working for top tier companies in, in, in Spain. I, as you could see, most of them you already know. Uh, and, the, and the figures of, of that company are spectacular. You'll see that it's been handled with uh, 100,000 contractors, the number of workers manager around 1 million, the, the customers about 700, but how we do it. So basically what, what we did was create a company aligned to what the market needs. So and starting when we were starting that point from 1 million, we saw that we need a team. I remember a conversation with the general management and she told me, Alex, when I started this, this business, from every two leads, I win one without doing anything. You, you saw that at the moment was a, was a blue ocean. But now, as more as we were creating the team, we were not more in the, in the part of the radar that was low. So we were at the forefront. We were creating a, a, a new a new positioning, a new positioning lead as much as we were creating the marketing team, the prospecting, the sales, and the customer. So what we hit at the time was the 50% quota in the industrial sector and also creating a partnership 
a partnership line with more than 10% of the turnover, being international in seven different countries in, 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 in Europe, North Africa, and also in Latin America, and launching new products. So uh, you are going to ask right now how we did it. So the, I, I'm going to explain it right now. So I explained to you that there are three pillars in the B2B sales. So the first one is methodology. The second one is people. And the third one is about management. So now we are going to talk about methodology. In this image, you see a sales funnel on the left. You saw on the right, a process. And on the right, at the, at the bottom, a playbook. These are the three tools that you need to define your process. And you find your, your team in B2B sales. The important part here is that you have to design a strategy, how I'm going to reach my first clients. I'm going to attain their inbound, outbound, who is going to be a partnership. When I have this direction, imagine that I would like to reach 50 clients at the end of the, of the year. I have to go down with, with them and to detail more. So which are the objective per month, which is the cost per lead that I need, which are the cost of acquisition channel, channel which are the um, annual contract value, value that I'm going to obtain. These are the, the design part. The second part is how we are going to, to achieve this one. So we have a playbook, we are going to define which are our messages, which are how we are going to work with them. Once we have the design and we have the playbook, we'll have to implement the tag stack. Tag stack could be basic at that moment. It's a CRM with some different tools for prospecting, something for time management, something for uh, video calling like, like Zoom. And finally, there's a key source that is management and how we are pushing the people to be better, how we are leading the way. In this self funnel, you saw a lot, of a lot of words. If you are not related with the B2B sales, there are a lot of fancy words, MQL, SAL, but basically there are how, they, how we organize that the qualification is an important part of the process. And depending on the part of the sales funnel that you are top, middle, or bottom of the funnel, it's quite different how we approach to the lead. It's not the same when we have a lead that are really interested to buy, that rather than when we have a lead that they didn't know about us. So you, you have to have in mind that, because if not, you are just using resources, using time without any result. And now probably, you are going to ask how we design a B2B process. First of all, we have different target companies. It's not the same to go for a SMB, to go for a commercial, or to go to an enterprise. The number of the turnover, the number of employees is quite different. So depending on if we design a process for enterprise companies, we will have to know that this process will take long. So normally the cell cycle is quite long. Instead, if we are going to SMEs, you, we are going to a three to six months, okay? This will affect to us in the abilities and skills of our team and also in the annual contract value. It could be at the same time that the business model or the, and the sales model that we, that we have is transactional or it's a consultative selling, or it's about solution selling. So we will put this information when we have it and we design our first process. First process could be like that. So when you just put the information that you have right now and to design the very first process of your company. It, it doesn't need to be one very complicated. It's something that you need to, to draw because all of the people that is involved, you have to be in the same in the same page. 
and how we are going to know if we are in the in the correct path. So basically, you need a dashboard or two types of dashboard at the at the right hand of our of our screen on the top. You will see basically performance. So number of deals, number of deals won over time, the progress, also the average of deals. So basically, calls, number of opportunities. Who is the performance? And on the bottom part, you will have the sales funnel by stages by, per month, which is a forecast of your sales, which are the top uh, performing, which are the top uh, customers. This also gives an information about if the process is running well, because you will see in which stage we are creating different gaps. And where is the gap? We have to, we have to put some action. Tech stack is very important. It's not the same if we have a solution about uh, 30,000 um, 30, euros per year, or if you have a solution like MailChimp that is uh, 15 euros per month. If you have a, a solution that is uh, transactional, you will need a very automated tech stack. But if you have a solution that is not as automated as, as MailChimp, but you are focused on that kind of, that kind of clients, your tech stack would be a CRM, a, a Zoom, a Calendly, and, and no more than no more than that. I'm going to explain a little bit about the differences between uh, transactional and consultative selling now. So, depending on the business model and depending on how we address the product to, you we will have uh, different types of sales. Okay, could be a transactional. Could be a solution or could be a consultative selling. I'm going to compare transactional and consultative. As I as I, as I said, uh, Mailchimp, when you when you want it, you are going to use. It's an automated process. You have a low annual contract value, and it's a no touch process. So you have it. You test it. You have a freemium. You are going to use. You put your card. And in 24, uh, 48 hours, you're going to, to obtain and you are going to decide if it's, if it's your tool or not, okay? But if we are talking about consultative selling and we are addressing to enterprise sales, we have to do a different approach. In Raise the Bar, it's what we do. We are doing uh, consultative sellings. We are understanding the process. We are uh, guiding them to understand the problem that they have to find a solution with our with us, no? We are going to convert them to partners. We don't need a super tech stack automated. We need to be strategic. We need to be networkers. We need to be analytical, okay? So you see the differences between, if we are addressing an enterprise, we have to be, uh, we have to be strategic. We have to not, we don't need tech. But at the same time, we, we have to help them grow, okay? But if we are in a transactional, the abilities that we have, the technology that we need are quite different. Here you have the comparison. There are a lot of fancy words here. ICV, it's uh, annual contract value. MRR, it's monthly recurring revenue. Uh, but the comparison, is is just for comparison. So if you go for a consultative selling, you know, you know, sell for the sales cycle, how how it takes. There's a contract and also the an MRR. If you are going to a to a Mailchimp, it's poor transactional. The the sell cycle it's one two days, and you don't need a contract. This is a template that we use for defining our our business models in in the clients. That we are, that we are helping them to grow, and also in the startup that that we are, that we have in the incubators and accelerator programs. So basically, I'm going to explain it in plain in plain words. So as we are in lead generation, uh, inbound, outbound, via partners or whatever, we have to score the lead. So basically, when we score the lead, if if we had a match with them and how they match. With us, so at the at the end, what we if we had uh, one thousand leads, we would like to score them to see. In theory, which are 
some of them that will perform better, okay? When we have the scoring, we are going for the qualification. Basically, this qualification is done by a discovery call. It's a discovery call when we call them and we talk about if they had to understanding the problem, uh, if they are the person that is in church, if also they have the need right now. So if all these questions are positive, we are going to perform a demo. In this demo, we are not going just to play and to say all the, the funny and the fancy things that we have about our product. What we are going to do is to understand the pain. We are going to help them to draw a possible solution together because we are going to, uh, to, to design with them a proposal. We are going to customize. We are going to help them in, in this scenario to guide them to the next level with our solution. And finally, when we are calling, we are going to push a little bit, but basically we are going to assist, assist them to buy. Later, you see that it's a double funnel inverted. It's when everything starts. So you don't have just the, the, the part that we win the, the account. So we are going to start working the account. So with the boarding, the renewal, the up and cross selling, and finally, we would like to convert them in advocates. I would like to show this because this is a company that is called Hold It. Hold It, uh, I don't know if you know them. It's a, it's a ERP that they detected a, a part of, of the market that was fragmented. And at the same time, there was no one in that space. So this company was sold last year for more than 100 million, so a big group. But this is not about the figures that I'm looking for this company. It's about uh, because they found this solution for less than 400 uh, workers. So there were not an ERP. There were, there were a lot of fragmented solution for payroll, another one for accounting, but not a complete solution. So this was the idea. You have an hypothesis, I'm going to validate it. And when I have, I have different levels. If you are going to see when you are in startup, if you could go for a free startup growth pro and enterprise, this is another example. Uh, and you will see that you don't have the resources at that time to focus from free to enterprise. As I explained to you before, you just have small resources. So these are small resources. You have to choose a direction. You have to focus. You have to understand if your client needs an enterprise or, uh, or free because the abilities and the skills that you have could be quite different. So remember, focus and decide which is your target. So now we've talked about process, about sales funnel, about focus and playbook. Now we are going to see which is the people that is, that is behind this process. And I think that is the most important part because how we are going to put all this process work. So there are people that are dedicated to, to facilitate conversations, to engage and to convert, to qualify leads. These are the people that is called self-development representative. When they've done this job, they pass to the, to the account executive, which are the ones that connect with people that perform the demo, that generate a good opportunity uh, health uh, sales pipeline. And as you've seen the double inverted sales funnel, here you start because they win some opportunities. And is the, is the time that the customer success on board the client, the customer success support your client. So finally, the account management is going to to have the retention of the client to see if there are some opportunities them to upsell, but with a clear idea to help them to work with, uh, to help them to work with and to have more information from us, okay? But now, how we do uh, align our teams. So there are different pods and there are different roles and 
how we uh, put the SDRs, the account executive, and the customer success. It depend. It depends on the on the company. We will see if we are more uh, an outbound company. We are going to have the structure of the of the ride. If we are more, if we need more people performing demos, you will be on the on the left. Okay. I like I like this this one because uh, it's about how do we start? Imagine that you are two co-founders, and there's some people that you are helping. How uh, are we going to develop this sales machine if we don't have all the people to perform? So uh, my my advice is that you are one of you is going to understand the customer's problem in that in that moment is going to see how we find the market, the market fit. And the other one is going to perform basically how we design the sales process. So this, uh, this combination will help you to get the initial traction about how we can achieve from MVP to product market fit. And this one is about uh, normally we, when we are in sales, we talk about uh, sell, we talk about play, we talk about uh, push, but when you are in consultative selling, what you do is connect, you do understand, you create relations, you provide value, you assist, and you win. Because you have to remember that you are in B2B, you are in the area that business uh, person to person. So it's important that first to sell anything, I have to connect, I have to engage, I have to understand what they need. And finally, if we have a good relation, we have a good product and our, and our company is trustable, I'm going to try to sell something to them. Finally, we, we are going to tackle the part about management and leadership because we need a direction, a focus and alignment. So there's a small recipe uh, about leadership and management. So it's important to be transformational. Every intern, every people, every SDR that you have in your team, they want to grow and you are the leader. So normally you need to create another leader because when they understand their job, they have all the position fulfilled, they're going to be the next leader. How we do it? Normally, be a coaching, be enabling, and basically is to invest time with them. But at the same time, we don't need the, the people that to be all the time invested in us because we are all accountable. We are, uh, there's a lot of plenty of information in on the internet. There's also, we could be with the correct attitude. We could be the best of our position. And it's important at the same time that uh, it's not about the tasks that we do. It's about if we win, if we achieve the results, it's important when you are in sales because what at the end of the day, at the end of the week or at the end of the month, it's important if we perform really well. How we do it, when we have different practices uh, from dynamics to, to trainings, individual or group coaching, and also inspira inspirational. So uh, when you invest time with your with your team, try to be, effective you prepare yourself and also the team has to has to be uh an understanding moment uh, what we need so i have these uh, strengths i have these weaknesses so we could draw uh, a path together from the next one to three months okay and this is also for reflection so normally when we are learning when we are adopting a new a new position or we want to iterate and optimize our, our process, we have to understand that there's something that we could do better. So you, you have some questions here from process and methodology. So do we understand the process? We, do we follow it precisely? Or from the product, uh, are these features are going to create value for, uh, for my customer? There is our silver, silver bullet that we have or per any role, if we own our role, or if I am doing my best in my position. So all of them are questions if they resonated to you. So 
uh, when you are talking with your manager and said, hey, I've been thinking about how I could perform better. There's something it's about me, there's something about the product and finally about the process. So the combination could create you a better professional. And if you are now in a, in a managerial position, I love this quote because you're going to create leaders, as I said to you before. So leadership is a privilege. So any influence that you have to people, uh, take good care of it because they are going to be the next leaders of your company or, and, they, and it will affect their trajectory still. So now the last part that we have. So we've talked about methodology, we've talked about people, and now recently we talk about management and now some bonus tracks with tips and best practices. So we all know about inbound, outbound, and a lot of techniques, but why we don't use this uh, on contact that we have when we are starting a company and we have contact from, from contacts or referral. So the one from the left, they don't have any cost. So First, when you are starting something, go to your own contacts, go from the word of mouth and ask for referrals, ask for everything to get your initial traction, okay? Second one is when you have, a, remember the slide that were five different from free standard to, to, to corporate, you have to decide, as I, as I said, which are the target customer that are your that are your one. So decide which is your ideal client profile, the market, and the buyer persona. Create the playbook and use it with the practices and tips. So once you have that, I will guarantee you that you're going to increase your opportunities. You're going to work less. You will have a better time management and also at the end you are going to increase the, the number of demos that you perform. Remember that within the within the conversation I told you about to draw your first process, your your very beginning process. So this is the one that is going to take two hours and a half. So it's an example of a B2B sales process. It's not going to take them one from the other in a row. But the important part is, okay, I have some time allocated for discovery call, 45 minutes for the demo, uh, 15 minutes for the proposal presentation. So it is important that you have in mind that because you are going to, to have more, more information about your, your company, more information about how you uh, handle your time. And at the end, there's a, there's a thing that you are going to follow, okay? And this is going to increase your productivity. No, this is a good one because um, sometimes when we are starting also a company and we are just a small group of people, we put an intern. We put an intern to work uh, for us. But the thing is, uh, if I haven't done this, how I could uh, show anyone to do it? And you don't have to lose this opportunity to see if your product is good or not. So first of all, try you. Show and show the people that is around you how you have to do it. Once you've sell, once you've sold the five, ten first unit of your of your product, you could show another people. You could you could design this uh, sales process. You could have your your playbook. Okay. And finally, basically, we are going to the to the tactics. As I said, we have an understanding about this focus about this ICP. The second one is go for inbound, so pulling these leads. The third one is respecting about this outbound that we that we know we are not just reactive, we are going proactive too. All of these leads that we have converted to the most to the customers. There is an activity about branding and marketing that is going to support all your activity. And finally, when you win your clients, it's all when it's going to start. It's not just the, the end, it's when all the things are going to start because you are going to the, the onboarding, you are going to the retention, and you are going to the upsell to generate more revenue to your company. 
And the strategy pillars, this is a this is a this is a wrap up for the strategy pillars that we have. So marketing is for the defining of your of your business. You have a strategy behind. You've developed the sales process and the sales funnel. There is a there is a tech stack that is involving everything. And the people also are the ones that are that are performing that are performing this sales process. And finally, the key source is the management, how you are pushing and helping them to grow. So I will I, I would like to share with you this last one slide, which is about winners and the people. All of us are winners uh, in the moment that we have an attitude to be to be one. So when we are curious, but we don't know how to solve the problem, but we finally uh, try to see a path, we are we are winning because at the end we don't give up. So thank you very much, and happy to be in touch with you. And now I'm opening the the question if you have anything to share with me. So thank you very much. Thank you uh, for sharing, Alex. It's really interesting, the process that you present. So we have uh, some question uh, just that you want to respond to your answer. You Thank have you very much, Leo. Some, some, of, uh, some of them are uh, my questions. Here, you have one of Thomas. How do you create that report? Uh, what uh, the first shoot LinkedIn events? Uh, here you have one more. Uh, when we are just two person, where do you recommend to put the B two B sales focus on? That's mine. <laughs> um, uh, what is the role of Pricing strategy in B two B sales model. You are mute. Okay, so we are going to start with the one from Thomas. Uh, if I remember, I think that is the one that we draw this uh, schema, this process. This is a this is a tool that is called uh, Sales Funnel. It's from Michael Branson. Uh, I will I will look for it and share it with uh, Leo. Uh, later, and uh, and Leo is going to share with you. Basically, it's a tool that could uh, any any element that and you could draw and concatenately put it put it down. So it also creates you with the number of lead, the conversion, and the time. So at the end, you will have the annual contract value when you start, and which are the ratios that you that you have at the end. Okay. So I'm going to find it later, and Leo is going to share with you. The second one, Leo, you asked me what to do when you are two people, no? So, uh, yeah. what, <laughs> what to do when you are when you are two people? You have to do two Superman or Superman and Spider Man, and because uh, uh, in that moment, in that moment, I I recommend to you first to to take care of your clients, your account, to do account management, to don't lose any any clients that you have to serve them uh, properly to understand them what they need and to provide them more services and more features this will enrich your product okay this is one thing that i'm going to address to one of you the second one is the other co-founder has to be the bridge between account management and new selling because the one that understands the, the, the customer is going to use the, this value proposition to the new client. So the pains that they have, we have to see if now we could serve. We have to be very time management uh, focused on the, on the way that we have to understand if the needs that they have today, we could solve or not. If there are things that we could not solve today, we cannot afford right now. So it's better to say no than to say, uh, well, no, uh, health 50% of I, I could solve. So better to be strict to say no and just go for the ones that we could afford right now and the ones that we could fulfill them uh, 80, 70%, okay? So this is Perfect. my recommendation. 
Yeah, and the quote could be uh, learned uh, from the first to close the second one. Yeah, obviously, when you are when you are in, in a startup, you are in a war mood. So in war mood, you are iterating every day. So you are understanding what the what are the client needs, and to the next demo, I'm going to be better because I have a, a problem that it's been solved exactly. to the client that I had. So, okay, great, Leo. And you you mentioned me another another question. Yeah, the pricing strategy. Wow, this is a good one. This, this will this will depend on the company that you are addressing. So the first one is the value. This if you are if you are providing a service to an enterprise, it has to be higher than an SME because the enterprise uh, the enterprise is going to require you a higher level of seniority, a higher level of everything. So. And they are going to require you also more services. They don't want your product. They want your solution. Okay. And how we put our strategy pricing by comparison. We have to see which are the solution that they have right now. If they don't have a software, how they are tackling this a need. If they don't have a, a software, but they have something, uh, this something has a cost. Okay, and the, and we have to see which is the disposal to pay. This is a super interesting concept. So the disposal to pay is the quantity that they are that they are they want to afford with your solution. So imagine that the thing that they are using right now, they pay one hundred, and with your software, you uh, you have a cost about uh, twenty. Okay, now you could put the solution at uh, 100, but you are not going to do that. What we are going to do is, okay, there's a, there's a benchmark from the solution that it has, and there's a part that they are going to, to have a discount because they don't want to have an advantage with your solution and you don't want to have all the gap for you. Okay, so this is a, this is a good way to understand which is the quantity that they are um, disposal to pay, okay? Perfect. If we don't have any additional questions, I have to say really thank you, Alex. It's a pleasure uh, to see you again. And thank you for all of you guys. Thank you very much, uh, Leo, for the invitation. It's been a pleasure to share this afternoon with you. And uh, so happy to to any that we could relate to each other. So thank you very much and have a good evening, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye.